Technology, Faculty of Architecture, Design and Planning, Faculty of Information and Communication Technology, Faculty of Mathematics, Computing and Data Science, Faculty of Natural Science, Faculty of Vocational Studies. Study program at ITS consists of vocational program, bachelor program, master program, and doctoral program. ITS also has more than 130 full-time international students and 400 international student mobility short program, KMB program, student exchange, and another programs. I work with many projects and many assignments, so it's helped me to improve my personal uh, skill and also for communication skills. There are many things that we have to fulfill and ITS has been helping me to improve this kind of things. Besides my hard skill, I also have been able to develop my soft skill, which is important for nowadays leadership. Also with ITS, I had a lot of opportunities to join different events for free, like the Ruja Kunek Festival, which was the cooking event, something. Yeah, this is like kind of opportunities that you don't have every day, and uh, it's funny to take part for once, or yeah, it's nice. inventing many technological innovations that have been acknowledged in various international competitions. These are several national and international achievements by ITS. ITS Central Library is in a six-story building with area 9,000 meters square. Library, more than 121,000 printed textbooks. Books. Data. And 18,000 digital library collections. Students with the books. The library also provides students with comfort study area. Multi-Purposes Room Asia Development Information Services which connect to the World Bank Database of ITS are geared towards addressing global challenges. Therefore, inventions are increasingly being produced by ITS researchers. People are talking about logistics and supply chain in Indonesia. We publish papers. We are doing research on transportation modeling. Uh, we are doing research on uh, warehouse modeling. And uh, we also do a lot of uh, networking industries with companies. And our research has. The second biggest biodiversity in the world after Brazil. But I think if we combine with our sea area, Indonesia will be the biggest biodiversity in the world. And how to utilize it? 
it is very big opportunity for uh, the treatment of some disease, not only for Indonesian people, but also for the world. Considering the fact that Indonesia has unique climate characteristics, and also Indonesia is also very well known as the laboratory of disaster, therefore a lot of issues, a lot of problems have to be solved. But this is a challenge for us. We cannot work alone. We need to work interdisciplinary, which involves experts, local or internationally. Therefore, we invite all of you to work here with us in ITS. We expect that our contribution and our work will bring ITS as the Center for Excellence in Disaster in Indonesia. ITS has more than 180 laboratories spread over 10 faculties. The laboratory is used to support faculty and students' research and provides the opportunity to collaborate on big projects and create impactful research programs. of giving an ideas and spirit and at the same time self-confidence to our country about how capable we are. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, before we start commence the program, and here are the following webinar protocols. For each participant ID, please use your real name following with your origin of institution. All of participants are expected to mute the audio and only unmute the video during the event. We cordially invite you to take your own firm and comfort seat in your own room and please avoid the backlight. Make sure that you have a good and stable internet connection. If you have an earphone or headset, we recommend you to use it so that your voice can clearly and loudly to be heard. During the Q&A discussion session, all participants, please use the chat box to deliver the questions. Thank you for your cooperation and consideration. Okay, good morning and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining our Zoom meeting. Before we start our program today, please allow me to share uh, important notes for participants. First, uh, you are suggested to fill the attendance and feedback form if you want to claim STEM for it. Attendance link uh, through bit.ly slash info session attendance form that you can also see on the Zoom chat room. The feedback form will be shared 15 minutes before we uh, before the event ends and close within one hour. For English workshop registrants, uh, for ITS postgraduate students only, due to high demand of English workshop and limited quota, maximum 150 participants, there will be further selection process. Second, you must fill the attendance and feedback form to be eligible for further selection process. This season is counted as English workshop program if, uh, opening as a meeting one. Third, English workshop with fellow will be held at 7 until 9 a.m. through the semester registrant who can confirm their availability and commitment to join the program at the agreed schedule will have higher el eligibility to, to be selected as participants of the English workshop. Uh, and then a commitment form to join English workshop with Felf. Please fill in the link bit.ly slash commitment 
For the detailed schedule, please check our website at its.ac.id slash international slash its hyphen goals hyphen global slash fellow. And then last, selected participant uh, or 150 students will be announced via email on Tuesday, 9 March 2020. Please check your email on the expected date. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, we are about to start the program. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A very good morning and afternoon to all of you. I would like to welcome you all to info session for postgraduate student R2 SEP Research and Research Student Enrichment Program and English Workshop with Val Virtual English Language Follow on this beautiful Monday, March 8, 2021. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start, please allow me to greet the Honorable Vice Rector for Academic and Students Affairs, Professor Adi Suprianto. Director of Postgraduate and Academic Development, Professor Harry Kuswanto. Director of Global Engagement, Associate Professor Maria Anitya Sari. To our speaker for the day, Ms. Sarah Ford, Ms. Elo Anggraini, and Associate Prof. Boon Chung Chu, and all participants of r 2 sep and English Workshop with Fellow. And in this beautiful day, we are going to have the following agenda. First, Uh, opening of program. Second, remark by Vice Rector for Academic and Students Affairs. Third, remark and info session for postgraduate students program. Four, overview program sharing session and discussion. Fifth, closing remark from Director of ITS Global Engagement. And last is closing. Ladies and gentlemen, now we are moving to the next agenda. I would like to invite Uh, Vice Rector for Academic and Students Affairs to deliver remark to Professor Adi Suprianto, please. Okay, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, first, I would like to give the warm greeting for our speakers, especially to Associate Professors Boon Chung Chu from University Technical Malaysia. Uh, and also Ms. Uh, Sarah Ford the, uh, from U.S. Embassy, and uh, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Elo Angraini. Uh, this is a representative of ITS postgraduate student. And also my greeting to Professor Harry Kuswanta, the Director of Postgraduate and Academic De Development, and also Associate Professors, uh, Maria Anitya Sari, the Director of ITS Global Engagement, and all passionate participants this morning. It is a pleasure for me to welcome you in the info section for uh, postgraduate students. I'm also delighted to tell you that on this great occasion, ITS also present the kickoff of two special programs for, for postgraduates. For postgraduates, the firstly is a uh, researchers and this is student enrichment programs we call the RECEPS uh, at spring uh, 2021, and secondly the English workshop for postgraduate students. Okay, the service uh, research workshop, workshop programs that ITS launched since uh, 2019 as our commitment to enhance research quality in ITS. Through these programs, ITS researchers and research students can learn from a series of guest lectures delivered by world-class researchers. In, uh, in 2019, we were honored to welcome overseas professors to deliver a session here in our campus Institute Technology Sebelum November. However, due to global pandemic of COVID-19 and border restriction all around the world, we decided to continue the research program as an online program since uh, 2020. Starting at uh, 2020, we take this opportunity to develop the program more comprehensively. The research become a routine program with a guest talk every two weeks with deeper topics about research skill with a lot more global researchers as speakers and also a lot more audience from ITS, non-ITS and international participants. Okay, continue the success. In 2021, ITS comes with more 
innovation to support young researchers in preparing their research project. This year, reception is organized through four specific streams, hard engineering, soft engineering, science, and also architecture, design, and social science. By doing this, we hope to give more comprehensive insights on research, not only for our students, but also to worldwide scholars who want to develop this research. Another important point is, we all know that research is an important project for postgraduate students. Therefore, we create these platforms especially to support them. The SAP is now compulsory by these postgraduate students who just enroll in the new intakes. So this become a compulsory one for the new students, the new postgraduates, uh, the new uh, graduate students. Therefore, we expect that the postgraduate students can take this great opportunity to grab insight about research right from the expert. We also expect that the student will get better preparation before conducting their research project as part of graduation requirements. Related to this point, we also present another program for the postgraduate student, that is the English workshop with FALF, Federal English Language Philo. I'm truly proud and happy to mention that ITS has collaborated with Regional English uh, Language Office, RILO, from the US Embassy. It is an honor to welcome Ms. Sarah Thank you very much. He is also attending this meeting today. Good morning, Ms. Sarah. Ms. Sarah and, and as a virtual English uh, language fellow for ITS. Therefore, the English workshop program is also related to our commitments to equip the postgraduate student in optimizing the study night. Then, as for the graduate requirement for both postgraduate students is to join international conference and publish academic articles in the international journals. We hope that postgraduate students can embrace this opportunity to improve their English competence. Finally, I am truly delighted to see your enthusiasm by joining this invitation this morning. I believe that you are ready to participate actively and absorb lot from both RISEP and English workshops. I wish you, uh, you all have the best learning experience in ITS. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Prof. Professor Adi, for the inspiring remark. Now let's welcome Director of Postgraduate and Academic Development, Professor Harry Koswanto, for the remark and uh, se opening session of program for postgraduate students. Please, Professor Harry Koswanto. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Reni. <coughs> uh, good, very good morning. Uh, Dr. Mat, Prof. Adi Supianto, as the uh, Vice Rector of Academic Affairs. Uh, Yang saya hormati Prof. Chiu, and also Bu Sarah. I think this is the uh, several times we meet here online uh, discussing about this program. And today, finally, we came up with the kick-off meeting. And also, Yang uh, saya Bu Maria, as the Director of uh, Global Engagement Office. And of course, our committee and the students uh, who already uh, participate in this program or this morning. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to say many thanks for, especially Prof. Cheo and Bu Sara uh, for being here to attend this uh, kickoff meeting. Uh, the st students, I appreciate very much your motivation and spirit, of course, uh, to join the workshop. And I would like to express my happiness that the workshop program has already attracted a lot of students more than we expect. As already mentioned by uh, the MC that uh, we targeted about 150 students to be participated, but finally we got more than 200 students uh, registered in the program. This is one of the signs that uh, the student has realized that this kind of program is very important. So of course, we, uh, we are very happy with this uh, fact. Uh, this workshop is part of our effort to increase the capability of postgraduate students. Uh, and later we expect that uh, <clears throat> by having the workshop, it will lead to the higher quality of the manuscript for publication for the students. So I can only expect that uh, you will enjoy the workshop later on. 
and gain as many as possible knowledge from the mentors, in this case, maybe Pusara. Yeah. So I'm quite sure that uh, all students here will enjoy the session with Pusara during the, uh, the workshop program. And uh, we also prepare already the recept program for postgraduate students. And uh, this, this program is again uh, compulsory for the new students of, of ITS, especially for the postgraduate students. And I already explained in this session uh, last week during the uh, introductory session on ITS that uh, this program is uh, compulsory in order to fulfill the uh, certificate later when you uh, will graduate from ITS. So I think that's all the remarks that I would like to, to give today. And uh, please let me open this, uh, this agenda this morning with Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. And again, enjoy the uh, agenda today and later on with the workshop too. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Harry Koswanto, to open this session. And ladies and gentlemen, to capture the moment, I would like to invite you all to in the virtual group photo. So please kindly share your best smile. Okay, uh, I will start counting. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, and then once again, five, four, three, two, one. One more time, please. Uh, five, four, three, two, one. Perfect. Thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, today's session theme is about info session for postgraduate student R two SEP researcher and research student enrichment program and English workshop with help virtual English language follow, which be delivered by our speaker Miss Sarah Ford, Miss Elo Angraini, and Associate Professor Bon Chung Chu and Ms. Nastiti Prima Diastuti, MPD from ITS Global Engagement will be the one conducting today's session as our moderator. Without further ado, let's proceed to the main agenda. To Ms. Nastiti, as our moderator, all the time and place is yours. Hello, Ms. Rainey. Good morning. Nastiti, we can't hear you actually. Okay, good morning, Ms. Jenny. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you so much, Prof. Adi. Uh, I'm very sorry because sometimes I got a uh, connection problem. Uh, so, very good morning to everyone. Good morning to Prof. Adi, Prof. Harry, uh, Associate Professor. Mariani Diasari, uh, Ms. Rainey, all the speakers and also all the participants. I am pretty much happy to welcome you in today's session. And well, today I'm going to uh, assist today's discussion. There will be three speakers for our session today. The first would be Ms. Sarah Ford. Uh, she is the Virtual English Language Fellow. Uh, I am proud to say that she is my English teacher. Uh, it has been really a good, great experience to have morning sessions, Monday sessions with her. Uh, good morning, Miss Sarah from Indonesia. Uh, good evening to you. Hello, Miss Sarah. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, quite clearly. Wonderful. Yeah, good morning to all of you. Happy Monday. Happy Sunday evening to you then. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Miss Sarah, uh, we cannot wait to hear about your uh, 
remark and also a sharing session in regard to the VELF that you will conduct for ITS this semester. Time is yours. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much, Nastiti, for the lovely introduction. And um, really, thank you all for waking up so early on Monday morning and being ready and excited to hear about uh, the program that we've been working to provide for you. I am going to share with you, if I can, if somebody can enable my screen sharing, I'll share some slides with you um, to get us started today. Let me try again. Please try again, Ibusara. Okay, I'll try now. Oh, there we go. So you should see a kind of blue, purple colored screen. Um, and what I want to talk to you is about is a combination of things. So of course, we're here to focus on your academic field, your academic journey. Um, in your graduate program. So these workshops are meant for, for support for you, but I also kind of wanna talk about, um, you know, beyond, it, the English beyond your academic programs a little bit, because I think sometimes we can all use a little bit of extra motivation sometimes. And it's also a good opportunity just to think about where we are on that journey. So, um, you can see down there my name, Sarah Ford, and you keep hearing that term VELF probably. And that stands for Virtual English Language Fellow. So before this year, it used to be just ELF, just an English Language Fellow. So someone that the uh, United States Embassy would, would select and then put in a university in Indonesia or other countries as well. Um, and we would work there. But since there's a pandemic, as I think was already explained, everything is virtual now. So we're all kind of learning this together. So in the next, I believe, 20 minutes, and if I'm incorrect at all, um, Nestiti or Reni or anyone can just let me know. <laughs> but uh, uh, in the next 20 minutes, I want to talk to you a little bit about my background, just briefly, just so you kind of know who I am, what my experience has been so far and maybe how that might inform what I try to provide to you. I do want to mention some of the things from the English workshop for graduate students, maybe a little bit what you might expect uh, in, in my workshops. Um, and I also want to have us take some time um, assessing maybe and reflecting on our proficiency and kind of really thinking about that. Uh, and the last thing is, um, and the probably the biggest thing I hope that we'll talk about is little things that can make a big difference. So little things you might be able to do to help your English language learning journey. All right, so a little bit about me. Um, if you don't know, um, I am coming to you right now. I am right now in the state of New York. So I think many people are familiar with um, the location of New York, well, of New York City. New York State is a lot bigger than just the city. Um, I'm in the Hudson Valley area of New York. So basically I'm two hours maybe by train north of New York City. Um, but that being said, I'm not actually from New York State originally. I'm actually from this orange state right here of Ohio. So, you know, the United States, just like um, I think very similar to Indonesia, is very big, very diverse. Um, and so I've made just this short journey from Ohio to New York, and I call both places home. Give me one second. Um, and just so you know, I've been teaching a combination of ESL or EFL for over 12 years. So the difference is really just that ESL, we think of like maybe in the United States, for example, 
where English is all around students all the time. So that's a little different than maybe where you are right now. Um, that would be EFL. So English as a foreign language, it's not language that maybe you hear all the time on the street or that you experience in your daily life. But I've been teaching a combination of those for over 12 years. I've been teaching in New York City and abroad. Um, and I've also studied abroad. Um, so I've been really, really lucky, really fortunate to have had some international experience. Um, I've been a student in Germany, but then I started teaching a little bit in Russia and uh, Korea. And um, most recently I was in Ambon, Indonesia. So I do have a little bit of experience in Indonesia in a totally different area than where I think maybe most of you are familiar with, but um, definitely it's really interesting and I'm really excited to be a part of your program at ETS. Um, and again, so I'm a virtual English language fellow. Um, so it's kind of like I have two bosses um, or two mm, supervisors. I'm with ETS and I work with them and I try to do what I can to help the program um, at ETS, but also I, I answer to the embassy at the in Jakarta. And I also sometimes connect with the consulate in Surabaya but they have um, an office there. If you ever hear of RELO, um, that stands for Regional English Language Office. And those RELOs exist, you know, at every, I think, American embassy across the globe. And so the one in Jakarta is the one that I work with. That's just to give you a little bit of context where I'm coming from and what I work through and kind of why I'm, why I'm, why and how I'm here, virtually here. Okay, so I wanna give a little snapshot maybe of what you might expect in the graduate student English workshops. You are probably already familiar or maybe you've seen in the posters, um, the topics and this is, these are the topics that were listed. I may have changed the wording just slightly but it's, those are the topics. Um, and it's a lot, it's a lot to work on. Um, and what I like to do is I like to, to make students produce English, work on English, use these, do, the, do these, act, do activities that cover these ideas. So I won't really just give you a lecture on what it, these topics are. For example, I'm not going to talk to you for an hour all about English proficiency resources for improvement. I'm gonna probably try to have you share, have you think critically, maybe have you look on your own, reflect, do something active. When it comes to some of the other things on the list, like for example, academic reading or academic writing, again, I'm definitely not gonna just talk about it. I really want you to do something that's useful for your program for what you're focusing on. So a lot of all of these things will make you work and do and use English. But um, I also like to have things kind of connect from one session to the next. So it, I think it's already clear in a lot of the information that you really want to like commit to really following through for the whole program because a lot of things connect. Um, let me explain a little bit more by showing you some of the tasks that I want to, to do that cover these things. So one of the tasks is a data commentary. So like, how do you describe, explain a, a chart or a graph or some statistics? This is a skill that's really important and it's not an easy thing to do. So we're gonna do an activity about with a data commentary. Um, something as simple as summary and response is so important. It sounds really, really simple, like, okay, write a summary about something, but actually you can use this to help you organize your thoughts and ideas and understanding about the things you read. So this is something we'll use as a tool to help you kind of organize yourself and process the information that you encounter in your academic reading. 
Um, one of the things that I think is also really helpful um, in the same way that a summary and response can be helpful is an annotated bibliography. And don't let the name scare you, but basically what it, what it means is for each academic source that you have, you put some information, you add, you annotate, you add some information. Maybe it's the summary, maybe it's the response, your opinion of it. But this is a tool that can also help you be organized, help you process the information and practice academic writing a little bit. Um, this next point I find really important. I think a lot of students, um, English learners want grammar and vocabulary support. Um, but I really think this idea of corpus based is really important. Um, what that means is like the grammar that is really shown to be used in specific contexts. So especially in the course, we'll specially focus on um, academic situations. So what kind of grammar is crucial to use correctly um, in those situations? And then vocabulary is gonna be a combination of what you encounter in things that you read and perhaps some things that I can provide to help you kind of support your own active vocabulary. Um, and this point here, this last point, um, I really want to kind of address this second to last point here, the professional academic conversation skills and doing what we call sometimes or what some educators call a Harkness discussion can help us do that. Basically, in a nutshell, what that means is a kind of discussion where everyone should be very active, very engaged, and really be sharing. Um, it's usually a student-led discussion. Um, and to do it successfully, you have to really have some strong conversation skills. So this is a challenge, more challenging than you might think to do a real discussion. So this Harkness discussion can be a really good practice and hopefully a lot of fun. Um, so this is kind of everything in a nutshell, we say. So kind of a quick snapshot of what I find, I think the most important tasks are. Things will overlap and connect from one meeting with me to the next meeting with me. Um, it looks very serious, but I always really like having a good time. Um, I really think that there's no reason why we can't um, enjoy the process as much as we can and hopefully have a few laughs along the way. Um, and I'm always, I mean, my, my biggest goal is to have the course, the workshops be something that is very helpful to you very practical, beneficial, and helpful to you on this um, academic kind of professional journey that you're on. So one of the next things that I wanna talk about is assessing your English proficiency because the thing is we're all at different levels. Um, nobody's language learning uh, development is the same as another person's. Um, it differs greatly. One of the, the resources I found that's very simple, it might take 10 minutes, is doing one of the like online level tests. And there's all kinds. Um, I found one that I thought looked good. And there's two parts, two simple parts. They have many options, but I have these links here that I believe the students who, at least the students who are in my uh, workshops, I would love for you to do this so that you have some awareness of where you are. And when you do these um, online level tests, um, it will kind of, I think it's 15 questions, it takes 10 minutes, and you'll get some kind of idea of what your level is. So you might have a question like this, it might change every time by the way. So this was one of the questions when I looked at it earlier today for the grammar and vocabulary test, the first link that I mentioned. Um, and you'll basically just choose your answer and go to the next question. And then at the end, it will give you a level. 
And if you're not familiar with this level, if you see a C2 and you don't know what that means, um, a C2, by the way, is very, very good, very, very strong. But these are basically the levels that it will give you. Um, and we might talk about that a little more maybe in the first uh, workshop with me, but it gives you an idea, just an idea where you are. I really wanna stress that whatever level or score you get, it's not a reflection on you as a person. It's not a reflection on how smart you are. Um, it's not a reflection on how good a student you are. It's simply where you are in your English journey. And that's it. It's good to know because once you know where you are, it can help you figure out, okay, where do I really want to go from here? So those um, online tests can be really helpful. And then the reflecting part comes in. So once you get a sense not just based on your own feeling, but based on some outside assessment, like I just showed you, you can really reflect. Um, I think sometimes people, learners are very hard on themselves and they think they need to be perfect now. Um, but it's good to kind of take a step back and maybe ask a few questions like, what do you want to be able to do in English? Like, what is your personal goal? Um, I hope that you have some English language learning goals beyond just, I need to finish this program and I need English for the program. Absolutely you do. But you, there are so many ways that you can learn English and so many um, ways that it can enrich your life. Um, what do you need to do in order to get to this level, the level that you really wanna be at, to be able to do the things that you want to be able to do in English? What, what maybe are some different things you need to do to work to get there? You might think about uh, your current practices of using English. Like what do you do now in English? What, what, is your, what are your English habits? What's your English routine? And is there anything that you want to change? Um, and then you might think, okay, so what could you change in your English routine? What, is, what are some feasible changes that you might make to help you make some progress? Um, okay, so you might, I'm not sure, but you might be feeling right now some feelings. So if you just take a second, stop for a second. Notice what you're feeling right now. So if you're feeling maybe overwhelmed, anxious, or uncertain. Um, I think that's kind of normal. If you feel like you should be doing um, huh? all of this stuff and you can't quite figure out how are you going to do it, it seems like it's too much to handle. So take a deep breath. It's not as hard as it might feel like because um, I really think that little changes can make a very big difference. And I'm talking little changes. So here's my biggest, biggest recommendation to any of you who are thinking you really want to improve your English, you wanna work on it. Remember that it's a long journey. It's not something that happens overnight, but start with a small amount of time regularly, um, five minutes every day if you can do every day, maybe every other day, but regular. Five minutes every day is better than two hours once a week. So the regularity is super helpful. And if you can figure out a place in your day to add five minutes of something, that's already huge. And you can use really simple, simple tools. So you don't have to have the you know, a Netflix account to watch movies in English all the time. You can do that, that's wonderful, but you don't have to. You can do very simple things. Um, one of them, and I know that Nastiti is already familiar with this, is a vocabulary notebook. Um, and I'll explain very briefly. And extensive reading. Um, 
I'll try to give you guys a quick overview of how you can use just these two simple things to help kind of support you as you continue English. So quickly, vocabulary notebook. I'm not going to play this video, um, but it's, it's a, from the British Council um, and you can, find, you can find many resources actually, but this, this particular one gives you step-by-step -step how to do a vocabulary notebook. Um, and I hope it doesn't play, I don't want it to play. Um, but basically, in a very, very simple way, the vocabulary notebook is a place where you can write down and review unfamiliar vocabulary. Um, let me click here. So when you write down the vocabulary, you want to include a definition, which was probably what you're already thinking. Definition or the meaning of the word is the probably the first thing that most students do, but there's more. You should include also the part of speech. So is it a noun? Is it a verb? Is it an adjective? Like what, what part of speech is this? And the pronunciation, which I think in English is super important because um, you may have figured out that English pronunciation is not predictable. So different letters that you see in spelling can have totally different pronunciation in a different word. And when you review your vocabulary notebook, you can add additional forms, additional forms of the words, collocations, which are word combinations, and your own meaningful sentences. Meaningful is really important. So you don't wanna write any sentence that you see, but you really wanna make your own sentence that's really true for you. So I'm gonna show you an example of what one entry could be like. And by the way, someone asked in the, the chat box um, if, these, if this information is shareable. And to be honest, I'm not sure, but I hope so. Um, I can, I'd be happy to share uh, the slides with whomever I need to, to make sure that they might be available to, to you. So let's look at an example together. So let's say, you want to look up that word unfamiliar. Maybe you're not sure exactly what that word is. One of my favorite um, sources of information um, is this Merriam-Webster Learner's Dictionary. Of course, you can use a regular dictionary. I love the Learner's Dictionary because it has a lot of words, um, not all the words in English, but the most common ones. And it gives definitions that are really easy and really simple to follow. So you don't have to spend a lot of energy trying to understand the um, definitions, gives very nice examples. And it even gives, if you can see down here, it gives the, um, a little icon that you can press to hear the word, which is really important. So I might look up unfamiliar. If you do get these slides, um, there's the link right there for, for the word unfamiliar to the Merriam-Webster Learner's Dictionary page. So unfamiliar, I would write down in my notebook, like I would save a whole page um, for just this word and I would put the definition. So it could mean something that's not frequently seen, heard or experienced. And I can't see everything not having any knowledge of something. All right, so that's the definition. It's pretty simple. You could also put synonyms that mean the same thing or antonyms that mean different things. And then the part of speech. So what part of speech is this? You might be thinking about it right now. So the part of speech for unfamiliar is, oops, and I didn't put it there, is an adjective in case you're wondering. The pronunciation, you want to think of two things in English first and foremost. So of course the sounds, so what are the sounds, but also um, how many syllables and where's the stress. So you might think about that word unfamiliar and think how many beats are in the word, how many syllables, unfamiliar 
unfamiliar. So you should have four. Unfamiliar. So four syllables and the stress is on the third syllable, unfamiliar. So that's really important in English. So you could listen again and again till you kind of get an idea. It, you can also find it in the dictionaries. So when you review, you want to add any additional forms. You might find out familiar is also an adjective. Familiarize is a verb and familiarity is a noun. So you could eventually, you could add more over time. You don't have to add it all at one moment, but you add as you go. You might also write down collocations. So words that go together, this is, this could be prepositions. So for example, unfamiliar with something or unfamiliar with someone. Or something can be unfamiliar to someone. So those prepositions might be useful to remember. Okay, and the last one is your own meaningful sentences. So for me, it would not be a true sentence or a meaningful sentence if I said, for example, I always look up in a dictionary words that are unfamiliar because it's not true. I'm lazy, I don't always do it. So maybe I would write this honest sentence. Sometimes I am lazy and I don't look up unfamiliar words. It's true, we're human, but putting that real honest sentence that makes a connection to me like, okay, now I might remember the word. Okay, so far so good. That is a quick, quick, quick um, idea of vocabulary notebook. And I mean, you can do it with just any notebook. Take a, get a simple notebook at like Indomart and you can, you can begin right away. And I'm gonna take a quick look, look in the chat box to see if there's anything important that I need to look at. I don't think so. I'll have to look. Not yet, it was at a... Okay. And very, very quickly, extensive reading. Um, it's something that I think uh, could really, really help. If you could find, again, some time every day. There's been research that um, has shown that even, I mean, ideally 20 minutes a day, some days 20 minutes might be a lot of time. But if you can have any amount of time regularly where you can read something, um, and there's a couple of rules. So one of them is finding material that is easier than you are able to read. Find something easy and enjoyable. So the rule is if you can read continuously without stopping to look up words, and you're able to understand the gist, like the main idea, you can follow the story, for example, that's great. That means it's not too difficult. You can read it and you can keep going. That's really, really helpful. You might think that it's better to read something really, really difficult to really help your English. And that's already what you do in your academic program. The articles that you read uh, for your own research that's a different kind of reading. That's really reading for lots of details. And it, it's, it's not helpful in the same way that extensive reading is. So don't be afraid to pick up something super easy. It should be something you're interested in. So don't just read it because you think like you're supposed to. And it should be something you enjoy. So don't be afraid to pick something you enjoy. Could be a novel, but it could be if you like, for example, comic books, graphic novels, that even, even that can be a really good practice. It's in English, you're reading it regularly, that can help activate your English language learning. Okay, so that's kind of a, the, the end of what I wanted to share with you today. I really, really want to wish you all very, very good luck um, through this semester in your program. Um, remember, don't give up. Uh, remember to take a deep breath once in a while. Um, give yourself credit 
for what you have accomplished, right? So don't always think you just have to keep doing more. You're already doing a lot. So give yourself credit. And remember that everyone's English journey is unique. So whatever you, path you're on, it's your own, okay? Uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for letting me speak to you. Thank you so much, Ibusara. You're welcome. And I also uh, I see some uh, nervous faces in this screen on my screen, and also some are uh, were nodding their head. I don't know. Uh, maybe. Uh, they feel excited, but they feel also uh, a bit nervous, Ibu Sara. Uh, but three things that I can say about Ibu Sara's class, uh, Bapak Ibu. Uh, the first one, you have to keep one book for notebook. It is pretty important to, because you can come back again to take a look at your notes. So one, get prepared and prepare one book for the class. And then the second, you need to participate actively. And even if you don't want to participate actively, Sarah will make you participating actively. And then the third, um, I will suggest you and uh, to come on time on every session if you are accepted at the VELF session because uh, two hours feels so, so long. But in Sarah's class, two hours is... Uh, it flies, time flies when you have Sarah, when you have Sarah for your English class. So thank you so much, Ibu Sarah. I will return to you in the Q&A session. Thank you so much. So now I would like to uh, call the second speaker for today's session. It is Mbak Elo. Hello, Mbak Elo. Good Hello. morning. Good morning, Mbak Anastiti. Hello, Mbak Elo. It's nice to meet you again. Uh, how are you? I'm fine. I'm very fine. <laughs> it's good to know. Uh, uh, I met Ma Elo probably two years ago during JWGA. Betul kan, Ma Elo? Correct, correct. <laughs> correct. And I, I consider her as a very active uh, postgraduate student. So uh, we are proud to have her today in the session. Ma Elo, are you ready for ready? sharing? Uh, I already said to Miss Nabila, please help me to share my presentation. Okay, time is yours. Okay, okay, thank you. Is it clear? Yes. Uh, yes, thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, Prof. Adi, Prof. Harry, and Associate Professor Maria. Good morning, Ms. Sarah Ford, Prof. Kun Cheng Chu. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for your coming and give me opportunity to share my international experience in this morning. It is very great pleasure for me in this precious chance to deliver my sharing to the most honorable audience. And uh, my presentation title is Seizing the International Experience. Uh, next slide, please. In 2015, I decided to continue my master study after deciding to resign from Tripatra, contractor company which was placed in ExxonMobil, Cepu. Uh, next, next, click. Uh, okay. I feel very grateful because I was getting international experience while working there. I tried to find a joint research scholarship at the start of my master study. I hope I can conduct joint research in one of Japan University, but Unfortunately, God had other plans and I decided to take one and a half year off uh, from my study because I had a miscarriage and was pregnant, my first children and my twin. And then I continued my study and start to focus again in 2018. I was active again in the vibration and acoustic laboratory engineering physics department. I was active doing my research and trying to complete my thesis. And then I start applying for research scholarship and student grants. And this is the documentation. It is my joint workshop for global engineers in Asia and beyond is my first international experience after I was on leave for a quite a while. <laughs> it's the
Hello. Hello, but connection problem. Hello, Mbak Elo. Hello, Mbak Elo. Mbak Elo. Uh, Hello, this will remember was as the host okay. the selected participant in this event. Mbak Elo, we, oh, we lost yeah, you for sorry, a moment. Sorry, sorry. But, but you, you're back. Already? So, uh, please continue, thank oh, you. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Yes, quite clear. <laughs> I'm sorry, because my internet is not good. Okay, I review again. I listened from Mr. Maria Sergei, and she became my inspiration. I already have three children. We... Even though we already become mothers and wife, we can still work and we can also make achievements. Thank you, Prof. Maria, for your inspiration. Next slide, please. Okay. In the end of 2018, my supervisor, Mr. Dani Arifianto, asked me and some of my friends in vibration and acoustic laboratory to submit our paper at International Congress on Acoustic that would be held in Aachen, Germany. Usually, big conference have to apply a year before. They already have a tight schedule. When I got an email from the committee that my paper was received, my supervisor informed me that there was an opportunity to apply for a student grant. Then I apply it. The student grant was option free of conference registration fees and living expense while in Aachen, Germany. I was trying to meet all the requirements that requested in the application form. The requirements are quite a lot, very lot, including recommendation from supervisor, recommendation from acoustic and vibration association in Indonesia, academic transcript, personal SI and etc. But Alhamdulillah, I got it. From this application, it became my reference application form while applying for other scholarship, other grants. So indeed, we will must struggle at the beginning. Very hard to find great ideas for academic writing, how to write well, but after that, we will feel the benefit because it's going to be like template for us that can be used to apply for other scholarship or grants. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to apply to a big international conference because there are so many benefits that we can get. Besides, we can present our research result. We can get comment or review from international researchers. We will get new knowledge, new inspiration to improve our research. Besides that, we will get the opportunity also to take part in collaboration meeting that held during the conference. Like my experience here, I can meet a famous researcher from Chipang, from Africa, from uh, America, and etc. Next slide. After I came home from Germany, it made me even more excited to apply for other grants so that I could attend other international conferences and meet great people there. Alhamdulillah, our professor always support us. With funding from his research, I was able to go to America to follow Acoustical Society of America at ASA meeting in San Diego, California, USA. Uh, I got student grant and I can use for my living expense while in America. Besides that, I took the opportunity to become a committee on the day of the conference. I get experience being able to interact with great researchers in their fields. Of course, I also get a salary from ASA. I can meet people whose name I usually meet in the books or papers, or papers like Beers Brigitte, Michael Volander, Prof. John Hansen, etc. 
that are very, very, very famous and great researcher in acoustic field. I'm very happy. From this meeting also, I received a travel support offer to attend the next ASA meeting in Chicago, USA. And they invite me to represent students at special session excellent in acoustic around the world. Because of the pandemic, the meeting was canceled and ASA conduct virtual meeting. Uh, please, next slide. In this year, uh, I submit again our paper to ASA virtual meeting in 2020 because the situation is still pandemic. The ASA meeting is going online. I go to grants. They are Acoustical Society of America student grant and free registration. Even though the conference is online, I think this ASA meeting is very inspiring for me, especially when vibration and acoustic laboratory will, will conduct an international conference as well. And next slide. Next slide, please. Alhamdulillah, I get the opportunity again to be selected nominee from Indonesia for Lindo Nobel Laureate Meeting uh, two years, 2020 and 2021 this year. Because of the pandemic, I decided to attend uh, this event online. In my opinion, the requirements in Lindo Nobel Laureate Meeting are the most difficult. <laughs> the selection process is also very, very long from academic writing, application form, until they have online interview. Uh, actually, I also want to go to Germany again, but because the country has made me falling in love, but I have three children and parents, I decided to become online participant again in this year. I hope there are another opportunity for me that allow me to go again to Germany with scholarship. Okay, next slide. And this year, 2021, Alhamdulillah, I get student awards of international research and education from ASA meeting, from ASA association again. And there are many benefits. I get three years student membership in the ASA Association. I think all of you, you can do like me. I hope my international experience can inspire all of my friends, especially postgraduate students in Institute Technology 10 November. As Institute Technology 10 November students, we can also compete and try to apply for international grants. Don't be insecure, don't be afraid, keep trying and never give up. Next slide. So how we can get the scholarship or grant? I think through this workshop held by International Office IETS, it is one of the facilitation. I'm sure that all of you will get very, very valuable lesson learned, especially to improve your academic skill. I just want to share a little of my experience and how to get the grant or scholarship. Next slide. Okay. Uh, next slide. Okay, thank you. For first thing, please make a plan. What scholarship you want to apply and then do your plan. Do your plan. Try, try and try. Don't be afraid. And you please check again all the requirements in the website or application form and please action sure to finish and submit your application. First of all, you must determine your field of interest and discuss with your supervisor about the novelty and contribution of your focus research. It is very important, especially when we write academic writing. Then you must try all the grants that you want to apply. Try, try, and try. Don't be afraid to fail. I also ever fail, but I never give up. I always try and I evaluate myself. Uh, you can learn you and evaluate yourself also. Tell a compelling story. Be yourself and please stand out. 
when you write your research plan and novelty contribution, personalize essay, rationally, career objective, please be yourself. And my strategy, another strategy is meet every requirement. Don't forget something. For example, recommendation letter is important. ID card, academic transcript, certificate, all certificate in academic and hard skill or soft skill is very important. And then the last strategy is submit application early. I usually submit three days or one week before the deadline. I send again my application to reminder the committee when the deadline. Uh, don't use the power of kepepet one day before. I think it's very difficult for me to pass the grant. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is example road map in my laboratory, vibration and acoustic laboratory. It is very important for you to choose the focus of in field interest. Since my undergraduate study until doctoral, I choose speed synthesis and signal processing with my supervisor, Mr. Dani Arifianto and Professor Sekartejo. This is one of the important things that you must choose your field interest and consistent to discuss and interact with your supervisor. And you must choose also international association regard to your research. Next. For example, in my field in acoustic, there are ASA and IEEE. And in vibration, there are ASMA, American Society of Mechanical Engineering. I think there are many associations also in your field. You can browse in Google or you can discuss with your supervisor. It is very important. You must consistent to discuss with your supervisor. Don't forget to improve your academic writing skill also. Uh, please, next slide. By follow conference, workshop like this, course or online webinar. It is very important for us. Thank okay. Thank you very much for your attention. I think all of you is very special. I want to give special thanks to my family, always support me, Mr. Dani Arifianto and Prof. Sekartejo as my supervisor. They always support me anytime. To all engineering, physics department, and ITS lecture and staff, thank you very much. Special thanks also to ASA and ICA Society who always support us as students. If you have further questions, we will discuss later. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maelo. But before we proceed, Bapak Ibu, let's give a very big appreciation to Maelo because uh, because of her amazing you. achievement. You know, she's been everywhere, and for me personally, that's pretty amazing. Your your hard work paid off, Maelo. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I will return to you for the Q and A session, Maelo, and then I'm going to. Welcome the speaker for our today's session. It is Professor B.C. Chu. Hello, good morning, Professor B.C. Chu. Hello, good morning, Mr. T. How are you? I'm pretty uh, amazing today. <laughs> How are yeah. you? Yeah, it's so nice to meet you again. Nice to meet you again as well. I'd like to thank to uh, Prof. Maria, okay, and also the invitation as well as to all the colleagues from ITS. Thank you again for having me here to share with you some of the uh, information. And I was uh, with, uh, I, I came in quite, uh, I think approximately five minutes before, and I also enjoyed the sharing by Ms. Ilot. Yeah, Ms. Ilot, for, thank you for the inspiring sharing. Nice to know that you can go very, very far from here. I think right now, uh, I have to say the global is a, is a, is a platform, yeah? I may say that uh, you know, everybody would have chances to work, to study, you know, to go anywhere else that you really like to. So this is a time or what I call as the outcome of globalization. So everybody has a fair equal chances for you to work, to study, 
You know, I myself also has an opportunity to go for my study. So that's the reason why there are many things, excitement, and so perhaps also a journey that has changed us to become a better person. So, uh, okay, so without further ado, I think I would like to share my, my slide. Is that okay, Miss Nastiti? Time is yours, Prof. Chu. Okay, thank you. Right, uh, for this information today, I'm glad that I'm able to share with you on this uh, R2SAP researcher and research students enrichment program, particularly looking at the supervisor and the supervisory relationship. Now for all the information, basically you can always get back to the Google. When you Google BC2 slide share, you're able to come to this copy. So this will enable you to have electronic copy paperless and it can reach over to you, yep. So I'll switch off my video because I'll let the data to transmit smoothly. So I only utilize my PowerPoint. If any situation you want to leave me a questions, anything, you are welcome to do so. Right, the first, first thing that we like to go for is normally when we're looking at the research, we're always thinking about research by doing in a master's as, as well as a PhD program, am I right? So I understand that in ITS or so, you have the master by research as well as the PhD by research. Obviously, this is also tailored with the world requirement because one of the research important thing is you are creating your knowledge. So the first things that I would like to share is you look at this winding road, then you start to understand that a research journey is like you're driving on a long winding road. But driving on this road is full of excitement. I hope that you agree with me. Because why? Because research is a scientific approach and a systematic process of discovery. And you have to understand that excitement always waits you on the, around every bend. So when you're going through the process, you're able to get the excitement, you learn yourself, you equip yourself. It is full of challenges, uncertainty, but obviously you are able to complete it because you are under those who are experienced supervisor who can help you to complete the entire process. Right. The next, next one is, I have to share with you, I'm a Malaysian boy. So when I did my studies, you know, that time, I'm graduated from a bachelor degree of civil. I'm a, I'm a quite a, a, a person who goes everywhere. You know, uh, I got my civil engineering during my bachelor degree from University of Technology Malaysia. And then after that, I got my master's of technology management. I go for management studies at that time, also for University Technology Malaysia. So if you ask me that time, I was actually working in a construction company and a company called YTL. I mean, it has some investment in Indonesia, I believe on a power plant. So at that time when I was started my job, my intention actually just trying to equip myself with the competitive advantage so that I can get better, you know, chances for promotions and everything while I'm working as the, in the construction field. But after I've completed my master's, then I met up with a very good supervisor of mine who she encouraged me. She said to me, yes, Chu, that time she called me, Chu, your result is not bad. So why don't you think about going for lectureship? You know, I applied for many universities and then I have to say a lot of uh, doors being closed over to me because most of them, they will say to me, you are from diverse discipline. You know, you are not continue in engineering because I have engineering, then masters, you know. So at that time it was difficult. Uh, but there are two universities that offered me. One is, uh, I think you know, I'm not sure whether you know that, it's a UTHM, University Tun Hussein On, is somewhere in Johor. And another one is UTEM. So the reason I chosen UTEM because that time, uh, they offered me the quickest. And then since then, by the age of 27, I already joined the universities. Then I got opportunity funded, and then I went to Scotland, Edinburgh for my PhD. You know, a Malaysian boy like me, educated for so long in Malaysia, get used to the Malaysian system. 
Then when you get to abroad, then definitely there's an element we call as a cultural shock. You know, I still remember when I first, first walked in to see my supervisor, there are three questions that she threw over to me, you know. I have three supervisors for your information. <laughs> I have three supervisors. Other people, they have one or two, the maximum, but I have three. Uh, fundamentally, the reason is because I'm doing renewable energy at that time. By linking all the theories and everything, I'm looking at biofuel, I still remember. So I have three supervisors at that journey. And then when three of them talked to me, I remember the questions that they gave to me. Uh, the first statement is a very strong highlight from all the supervisors. They say, this is your PhD. You know, and then after that, they said also, I hold you accountable to the completion dates agree. Means that whatever date I promise, I must capable to deliver, no excuse. Then after that, another question is quite interesting. They asked me, tell me, you know, that time they call me BC, because you know, our Malaysian name is quite long, Bun Chong Chu. They either call me surname, so I get them an abbreviation of short form of BC. So he said, to me, BC, tell me you are here to get your PhD or to gain your PhD. You know, when I first be exposed with the three statements that implant in my mind until now, you know, I studied in 2000 and, uh, 2007, yes. You know, that time I still remember, I started get into the, uh, the, the, the airport. It was 11th of September. <laughs> so you can imagine that the security checks and everything even opened up all my luggage, which has a vacuum bag inside and open up again. And I have to tidy up. I cry in the airport. I have to throw some of the clothes. Because you see, when you vacuum up in a vacuum bag, it is all compacted. But when it is open, then you know that everything it's just like you have opened up a box that the elephant has comes out, you know, so you need to squeeze everything in and after that you have to make sure that you continue to the next journey. It was London Heathrow Airport at that time. So I knew that when I firstly heard about this, I felt shocked, actually, you know, and I think if let's say like you have been exposed with the three questions, how do you feel? Some of you might feeling very scared. Some of you might feel very uncertain. Worry is a definitely one. Because they say, this is your PhD. I hold your accountability. And what are the differences between get your PhD and gain your PhD? You know, even if I put into the master's context, this is your master's. I hold you accountable to the completion dates and tell me you are here to get your master's or you gain your master's. That's a very different, big difference. So I'll explain that later at my last part. So that is the one that quite alarming for me, you know, because previously most of the people thinking those that got opportunity to go abroad, they must be very happy, you know, happy ever after. You know, I think a lot of my colleagues here, even Prof. Maria that graduated from Australia, you might have the similar thinking, I like mean, or just now, you know, the speaker, you know, event to Germany, you know, this is, it is, it is beautiful at the surface, but it needs a lot, a lot of challenges that you need to, encounter and then you need to solve yourself. So that's the reason why when you are a master or PhD, you are postgraduate students, you have to have certain kind of qualities that we call as the maturity, yeah? Kematangan or in Bahasa Malaysia, right? So you have to understand that your supervisor roles, most of us, we expect, you know, about supervisor's role as an academic guidance, he or she would be the subject matter expert or the research method expert. And obviously she, he or she also a research project advisor. Is it your master's going to be finished one year, one and a half year, two years, or your PhD, two and a half years, three years or four years. It's really up to the, 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 the time that being spent and mostly will be determined by your supervisor. You know, because there's also another program we call VIVA. It's a proposal, uh, no, sorry, it's a PhD oral examination where you need to defend your work. So it is a time that have to be encountered and also have to be taken into consideration. A quality assurance, which level as a graduate requirement? Are you a master's by philosophy, master of science? 
Are you an MBA student who are doing a tiny or small research project? Are you a doctorate student, doctor engineering? Is it a mixed mode? Is it the full research? All of these have a level of graduate requirement. Publication would be one of it, right? Like in U10 or so publication could be one of it. And obviously your supervisor also sometimes provide motivations and support academically, remember. You know, you cannot bring any problem. Let's say like you quarrel with your girlfriend, you miss home, you know, and then you quarrel with your boyfriend and you need to, a shoulder to cry on. That is not really the motivation and support academically from your supervisor, right? But after that, you know their roles. You also have to have a compassion about your supervisor. You know, you always see he or her during the free time, but after you walk up from the room, then you obviously know that there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot more things that your supervisor has to deal with because she has another academic task, teaching, marking, evaluating, you know, she has to do research, which is away from your topic, the publication that has to be put on, consultation, either about private industry or other students, attend meetings, management, periodical project, apart from supervising you. And then obviously, it is not you alone as a student under his or her supervision. There are many students also want his or her attention, right? So another thing that I have to highlight to all of you, even to my students, I would say that it is your personal decision to continue your postgraduate study. It is your personal agenda, personal dream, personal requirement for whatever reasons that motivates you. You have to remember it is yours, but it is the official job of your supervisor. And these official jobs, eh, your names, your degree, the job, everything will be put and definitely will affect his or her performance in any part of your studies. Well, we hope that you sell it true, but if you do not, then you give a great impact for all of us as a supervisor. So in such a case, then you know that it is your personal pursuance, but it is an official job. So in such a case, apart from expecting your supervisor to be a wonder woman or be a superman for you, you also have to understand that he or she also need to be a wonder woman and so a superman for other people. Because remember, always remember, it is your motivation that you want to achieve in your private objective, but it is an official job for all of us. Particularly if you have any troubles when it comes down, the supervisor has to make sure that it's well facilitated and not going to harm any kind of your journey. But we're afraid of students who are not committed. That is the most scary things that we ever cross over. So what are the qualities to make a good postgraduate student like all of you? Masters, PhD, it doesn't matter. You have to always understand that the maturity has to be installed, that you must be away from what you have done during the bachelor degree. You have to mature, you have to attention to all the details, you have to be independent and self-motivated. Remember, you know, ups and downs, as I say, every bend, every curves, you have to remain motivated. Remember the first day why you come in for your postgraduate study. I always ask my students, you know, even myself, the first, first day when we are fresh, we're excited, we're full of dream. You know, some of the students comes in when, 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 when you ask him or her, why do you want to do this? Why do you want to do Master PhD? I want to change the world. I want to get Nobel Prizes, you know, everything. All of this ambitious, please write it down. Then after that, put this piece of paper on your wall to keep motivating yourself. Why do you come in for the postgraduate study at the first stage? Okay, so that is all about the psychological preparation. Next is all about the work. Punctuality, you have to meet the deadlines, accountable for the deadlines. Hardworking is the one, all of us Asian, we have a one common characteristic, we are all very hardworking due to our culture, our family upbringing. I do not know whether you agree with me, I can generalize in such a way. Then after persistence, well-organized, critical, and obviously you need to focus. 
You know, that is very dangerous if some of the students ask me, sir, if I do my study, can I work part time, you know, everything? It is difficult to be answered in such a way. I always advise my students. But please, I know when you require for financial support, you also need to focus, you know? Then after that, ethical and reliable and trustworthy, you really do your research. You are not copying it somewhere. You have to be very confident about handle academic criticism. You know, sometimes don't just because of one statement or opinion from not only from your supervisor, it might from anywhere else when you're attending conference or whatsoever inputs or even you publish, you know, sometimes you might receive academic criticisms that beat you down. But as I say, you have to always think about everything is all academics to make you better. You know, we all also come the same, the same process. You look at the professors in ITS, you look at professors all around the world, you ask them, all of us got to the similar process. The only thing that makes all of us success is persistence, I have to say. You know, you never give up, you rise every time you're beaten, then after that you do whatever you want to achieve to make sure that you attain the objective and being successful. And obviously being professional, draw a line between your study and your private life. You know, all the excuses, for example, I have kids to take care, you know, I have a, a parent who is unwell, you know, or any kinds, you know, you know, everything, please remember to put aside because the supervisor here is trying to help you to achieve your goal. As I say, do you know that after you got a postgraduate degree, a master or PhD, you know that how much economic power could be generated on you? You might not even know that, you see. So it's nice that you can have a chat with your supervisors, ask him or her about her experience, feel how he or she gone through the process. And obviously for the students, international students, it means that students who are coming into ITS or the students who are leaving, you know, like uh, those that were sending all abroad, we have to understand their cultural differences. And after that, you have to know that your roles as a postgraduate students, this is the way that you have to make into application. Previously, it was about quality, right? This is about quality. This is the one that you need to put into practice. Study materials, follow, apply your supervisor advice, initiate the content interaction and meetings, okay? And then after that, you follow whatever has been done on the research proposal, progress your work on time, keep a record of supervisor and research progress, and remember, respect your supervisor, okay? That is the fundamental role that you have to play. Right, remember, do not, okay, do not, now, this is the, 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 the sharing that I, I would say that because we, you know, some of us, we, we might study previously abroad and after we come back and then after that, we apply in Malaysia or in Indonesia also would have the sum of the general rules that has to be complied, I would say, you know. So remember, do not, do not expect your supervisor's English teacher to check your grammar when every word being submitted. It is impossible, okay? because the supervisor has a lot of other commitments, as I mentioned to you just now. And then do not also expect your supervisor to speak as a spoon fat you, you know, call you, guide you, give you this, give you that. Can I have the PowerPoint? Can I have this? You have to initiate yourself, okay? Or you want to rush ahead without your supervisor's permission. You know, every stages, even though the thesis finally is report that you have to be produced, you see, but you do not go ahead without your supervisor's permission. You know, supervisor is just like a guide, you know. He or she will tell you do and don'ts, be careful, you know, that's a trap. The data is not viable. This is not really feasible. This is difficult. Every of this advice, make sure that your research journey is going to be smooth. Or you might slow down your progress without a good reason, you know family matters, pregnancy, you know, health matters, everything, please tell, you know, supervisors are, are there to help you, you see. So don't ignore your supervisor or hide from your supervisor. That's the scarier things, you know. We do not know whether what happens to him or her, if a student just keep ignoring us or hide from us, or you keep quiet when you face problem, 
it doesn't matter you know if you have private matters you just inform you know you just inform yes i have this problem it might slow me down i have a health problem i'm going to deliver my first child at the which month everything you just report you know there's always a human touch between you and your supervisor and then we have been trained to be understand okay the universities also have the rules to help you so do not ignore do not hide from your supervisor equip yourselves with these skills so that is a, a lot of skills that i would say that according to your progress and obviously if you found out that you're lacking any kind of skills you seek and participate in training courses to equip yourself you know i took part in r to set okay last year for the publication strategy also talk to some of the students about how do you do a good publication and at that time i also talk about shared about predatory journals and then this year malaysia received a journals that come from a spanish scholars that get given the rank that malaysian top the predatory journal it shocks the entire nation so you see you know from me that you can just get yourself prepared so that's the reason why r 2 set is one of the platform that you really can sharpen your skills learn a lot of things from us and after that equip yourself what are the skills that you need to have planning communication listening okay well you might listen but you do not understand it also a problem academic writing articulate ideas you know your ideas has to be factual basis you can't always say that, okay i think i feel you know i i don't know you know that is all very subjective you know if let's say that like, you would like to support you might thinking okay i think covid vaccination is good why you have to explain articulate your idea as well it is not about oh i feel you know i feel you know i think i dream yes without facts then how are you going to articulate your ideas good command of the language so you see not every one of us have a good command of english this is not our primarily it is not our mother tongue right not our primary language but you need to put efforts in in order to sharpen your skills do not hide away from the weaknesses okay when you found out that the language could be one of the big gap or big trap for you then don't sweep it under the carpet i also gone through a very hard working process i open dictionary i memorize the words you see i listen to the english radios I watch televisions with English subtitles. You know, I try to comprehend all the talks and everything. Time span that bring me brings me up today. It is not I naturally born to be a good English communicator. It never going to be that way. Analytical, asking good question, finding information, reliable and good information, effective reading. How quick that can you read? managing your data it is a printed or electronics okay and after that using software some of you might need to using some software for your data analysis at least i think all of us needs to use workstation correct or workstation software microsoft open office okay typing skills right and after that need to always remember to make backups for whatever that you have produced it is a, a years many years work remember don't because of the computer got problems and whatever that you have then you might be disappear or uh, deleted that is very wasted on that then after that you also need to know how to do formatting referencing okay academic writing on journal it is quite different from academic writing on thesis okay and after that presentation how confident you are to take part in the conference talk and then finally a skill to defend your work during the viva process so equip yourself with all these skills you know understand that what are the weaknesses of yours and if possible talk to the school talk to the universities okay then after that ask for help and organize a training you know i always love to ask my students to initiate that you know some of my students maybe they have some weaknesses then i ask them to organize themselves and invite me to come in always initiate you know don't wait things to come you have a fully resources staff and also colleagues and supervisors in ITS remember what you need to do is initiate and ask their permission invite them to come and help you you know and after that you have to also understand oh, that is the questions i eight questions 
that I always ask my students. If you ever done one of it, I would say that you are actually has prepared yourself for the postgraduate studies. First one, have you ever read your supervisor published work, for example, his or her journals, to know the expertise of his or hers, the way that he thinks and presents his or her idea? Any one of you? Mm -hmm. Second one, have you ever read the student thesis who was supervised by your supervisor previously to know about his or her expectation? Mm -hmm. Third one, do you ever try to communicate with the ACT students or the current student supervised by your supervisor to know more about him or her? Mm -hmm. Next one, do you do a proper self-evaluation assessment to know what is your strength and what is your weaknesses beforehand? You know, do you like this subject? Do you think that you want to go for qualitative? Do you want to go for quantitative? Do you want to use certain software? Have you ever self access on your strengths and weaknesses beforehand? Have you ever go to a library and know how to find journals and reading materials? Uh -huh. Have you ever read, that's an important one, read the academic regulations, handbooks of the graduate schools to make sure you clear on the do and don'ts about the postgraduate research? Next one, have you ever keep a research logbook? I don't mind the paper that come pieces by pieces, yeah? At least buy yourself a book, okay? And then after that, start making notes on there. Have you ever, the last one, initiate to read a research method book at the first stage? So if eight items over here, you can hit one of it, I will consider that you have prepared yourself for to become a good postgraduate student. If none of this, you know, then you have to start kicking yourself up, tell yourself what happens to you. What are you waiting for? Are you waiting for the rains to fall? Are you waiting for the rainbows to come out for you? Have you ever been initiated for it? That's it. So when I see my supervisees every time, I will ask them. So next one, I come back to the questions that I've shared with you just now. So when I received, my supervisor told me that this is your PhD. It is obviously not the supervisors because the fundamental reason is because that is my responsibility. If you cannot bother to work to make on the objective achieve, then why should they? That's a realistic. So that is your PhD, that is your master's, that is your work, that is the academic uh, pursuance that you're going after. So that is my responsibility. I hope that you can start understanding this. Second one, I hold you accountable to the completion dates agreed because time is the most valuable resources, I tell you. It is not about the cost. Time is the most valuable resources. If you never ever to manage the time properly, time just slips through your fingers easily and you might even not even notice that you're already in the university or in the school for one year, two years without any progress. That's a quite dangerous one. And fundamentally, you have to understand that this is a degree that you pursue. You need to have also a time that control in terms of how long do you need to work to complete your studies, you know? You are not doing a research which is unlimited time. Remember, you have limited time and time is the most valuable resources. The last one is the question, you are here to get your PhD or to gain your PhD. You know, after that, after many years, you know, after I graduated, I only chat back with my supervisor because I went back to the sabbatical with them on 2018 and 2019. Then only I know that they want to know whether I'm there to get or to gain. Now, to get, it means that in the quickest way, you just come in and then just get it, then you just get out from the systems. You know, your intention is just you want to complete it. But if you really want to gain the PhD, it means that you really want to master the knowledge. You really want to spend time. It is about managing the expectation between your supervisor and you. And to understand one's motivation to pursue the postgraduate studies. So I have to say to you, I gained my PhD in a difficult 
way. And I cried, yes, I cried quite a few times, you know, with my wife, my colleagues. We just tell ourselves why it's so difficult, you know, when we come to this, the UK university. But you know what are the surprise that we have found? First one, when there's always a will, there's always a way. And second one, I have to share with you the competence. You know, when we come back after 2012, you know, we are competent enough at that time, I have to say to you, to show to our university top management, to convince them. We tell them, because we just graduated, we have the capability to produce another PhD. How many of us actually have that confidence? Because we gain through the process, we know what are the do and don'ts, what are the reads and everything that makes all of us become stronger, okay? So finally, I would like to say that if you have time, try to have a look on this book yeah? uh, by Townsend, okay? how to keep your doctorate on track. Now from this, there's an insight from students and supervisor experiences. And over here, time is the one that is most important for the students and also for the supervisors to always agree on. Because remember, you are doing your project, which has a time frame. It cannot be stretched about 10 years, eh, guys. It cannot be stretched more than that. It has a duration, the limitation that you need to comply with. Okay? So by then, I hope that I have uh, given some tips, some inspiration to all of you. So if you would like to find my slide share, you always can just Google BC2. You have a look at my academic work as well as my slide share. Yeah, Thank yeah. you very much, guys, for listening to me. Thank you for the organizer. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Chu. Uh, I believe all of us got swayed by the three speakers. So uh, our time is limited. So I'm going to go directly to the Q&A session. The first one would be for Ibu Sarah. Ibu Sarah, are you with me? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Thank you, Ibu Sara. Uh, Ibu Sara, I, we got several questions about grammar and academic writing. So please tell us, uh, are, we going, are they going to learn English grammar for the fellow? And also, are you going to give material related to academic writing? Thank you. So what I, what I definitely hope to give um, in terms of formal grammar uh, instruction is things that are gonna be useful for uh, academic writing probably, mostly writing things. Um, for example, uh, reporting verbs, uh, phrases that can be used in academic writing. Now, as we go through, as we work together, I know that I'm going to discover the English language level of people in the group. And if we need to go over other things, then we go over other things too. Um, some of the most basic things, it would be great if people already kind of are familiar with. So like, you know, how to change the verb when you need to different tenses. It's, you, it's really helpful if there's a kind of a basic understanding already, but we need to fine tune some of the things. But, you know, I work with the group as we need to. So if it's helpful to go over some of the basic things, then we go over some of the basic things too. I hope that answers the question. Thank you. So probably, uh... Yes, they're going to learn about grammar, but not only the structure, but also the appropriate way to use it in several contexts. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And probably Thank especially, you. especially focused in the academic situations. Okay. Thank you, Busara. And then the second question will go to uh, Professor Chu. Yes. Uh, okay, Professor Chu, from what your presentation, we got that uh, PhD is about self-discipline and the fruit of the labor is a uh, self-worth, something like that. So do you have any, uh, what is it, a recommendation for students who, uh, who are studying different fields in their PhD? 
to their uh, graduate study. Right. I think the first thing that you need to always put yourself on, yeah? the first one would be, you know, when you're still fresh or you can recall the, what is the objective that you want to study. That's the first, first thing that you should draw it up, you know, on your, on your, on your wall. The second one is I recommend you to build yourself a gun chart, you know, gun chart, you know, with the activities and also the mm -hmm. time frame. You can easily use it using Excel to build it because uh, it's quite handy. So when is the time you need to do publication and things? I might later on, I can share on the chat box some of the materials later, might be, might be quite handy. The third one is you master yourself with a mind map. Yeah, get yourself a software or even though if you do not really want to use software, you want to use hand painting, I would say that the mind map will be quite handy for you. So all of these three things, why is it I say that can create the self-discipline? The first one is the vision that can control in terms of what you want to achieve, the mind. The second one is about the time. That's why you go for the gun chart. The third one is about the quality, it means that what are the, the, the studies that you want to build? And you can have an eagle eye looking at the mind map. Very clearly, you can present and you can complete your work within the controls, variables, or the context that you have set. Thank you. So in other words, Professor Chu, uh, it is okay to take uh, a new journey in another field for the academic uh, journey, as long as we know our strength and also we know that we really want to gain our PhD. Is that correct? Is, uh, is it you're asking me uh, the, for the different degrees that I have? Is it or you're asking me about, about, about the, the, the time planning? Which one? Uh, are they related? Because uh, we got a question about someone who wants uh, someone who already gained uh, one particular degree in S yeah. in uh, in graduate study, but they want to continue in to continue PhD in other field. Oh, Is that okay. still possible? I get you. I get you. So okay, my my experience will be quite different. You see, because uh, I of I've been given the opportunity to come into academia at the first stage, so it means that. I be frank with you, I never think about I want to be academics, you see, because I'm a quite a handy man, you know, I wear my, my yellow boots and my helmet when I was in the construction site, you know, I, I never even think that I was using, uh, holding whiteboards and also, you know, marker pen to draw, you know, I, I never even think about it. So uh, the only changes that put me, puts me, put me through was that I've been come to the academic first. Then after that, when I know my academic, then PhD is a must that for me to go through. I mean, obviously, you need to always discuss with the supervisor about the changing field if you really want to be academics. I have to always tell my friends that I'm the weirdest among all because no one actually has a similar, similar degree like, you know, from the first, the second, S1, S2, until S3. You know, but myself, I've been diverting a lot. Uh, because I, I, as I said, I prepared for the, for, for the industry. I, I did not prefer for academics. So academics wise, I would still think that you have to ask your supervisor and then ask your opinion to see whether it's valid. But for, for, for the industry, definitely, yes. They welcome more diverse and also, you know, more types of uh, exposure. Uh, I have to say that after I've gone through different degrees, it makes me more innovative, surely. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Professor Chu. Somebody, uh, someone wrote something weird is probably the best. Okay, uh, I agree. We live, uh, sometimes we need surprise. Thank you, Professor Chu. And then the third question might be going to Maelo. Maelo, one person asked, if we already get a scholarship LPDP, for example, is there still possibility for us to, do, uh, to get grant research even though you already got a uh, scholarship. Oh, yes, I. What's your opinion? Okay, on that? thank you. In my opinion, is very, very okay, can we can we can apply because there is no requirement that we already get another scholarship. We cannot, uh, we cannot apply the grant or scholarship because uh, this is the grant in conference or uh, the scholarship from society. I see. So uh, it is possible as long as we try. Yes. yes is that correct. so? But we must uh, we must read again the requirement, okay. the mm -hmm. notification from the committee. 
if we can double scholarship, we must try. If they say, uh, if you already get the scholarship, you cannot apply, yeah, we cannot try it. <laughs> Okay, so we also need to take a look at the requirements, something like that. Yes, correct. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Uh, I believe we have a lot of questions in the Q&A link, but I have summarized them into three. And uh, I think because we're running out of time, I think this is the end of our Q&A session. Uh, as the question related to the running, program of VELF and also our 2 uh, the committee, including me and Ms. Nabila and also Ms. Jacinta, will be happy to answer. And also please check our website to get further information about our 2 and also VELF. And to show our gratefulness to your participation today, uh, Ms. Sarah, Maelo, and also Prof. Chu, we would like to share a certificate of Appreciation. Please, Miss Unsa. And then the second. And then the third. So thank you so much for coming to our uh, info session and the opening of the international program for postgraduate students. Thank you so much. I mentioned it again to Ibu Sara, Tumba Elo, and also to Professor Chu. Uh, I hope to see you again in other occasions. Thank you so much and back to you, Ms. Rainey. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ms. Sarah Ford, Ms. Elo Angraini, and Associate Professor Chu for the excellent session for today. And don't uh, not forget, thank you to Mbak Nastiti for conducting this amazing session. And please give applause to our speaker and moderator by using the Zoom reaction feature for today's amazing session. And for the last agenda, let's welcome Director of ITS Global Engagement, Associate Professor Maria Anitya Seri for delivering closing remarks. Okay, good morning, uh, all of you. Sarah, good evening at your side. Thank you so much for uh, giving an overview of what we are going to uh, go through the very uh, challenging journey, but very beneficial and uh, fruitful journey later on. And also special thanks to Professor Chu, my good friend. Thank you so much, Professor, for delivering your motivation. I can read in the chat room many positive feedback on your uh, suggestion. I took several pictures and sent it to my student and I remind them, remember, we have to keep the qualities that needed for uh, su uh, successfully completing our journey in postgraduate. And also special thanks to Mbak Elo. Hello Mbak Elo, apa kabar? Hello Bu, apa kabar? <laughs> Sangat senang bertemu Bu Maria. <laughs> Selamat dapat inspirasi baru Bu. <laughs> Thank you ya Mbak. Thank, Thank you so you. much for sharing your experiences with all of us. And all the uh, students, I don't know whether Professor Adi, our Vice Rector, still here with us. And also uh, Professor Harry, just let me check. Professor Harry is still here. Thank you so much, Professor Harry, for yeah. your uh, always uh, breakthrough and innovative, innovative uh, attempts, effort to make postgraduate program uh, flourish and grow quicker and uh, faster. And also, I have to say special thanks to Professor Adi Suprianto. Maybe he's not here anymore because he has a lot of other commitment for supporting this program. Okay, now we are here. Are you ready, everyone? Are you ready to open a completely new world to embark your new journey to experience something different? Are you all ready? Bapak Ibu, are you ready? Yes, I am ready. Okay, okay. Okay. Bapak Ibu and all the colleague, respected colleague, I would like to share a very interesting fact about our program. I myself, when I received the report from uh, Nabila and also Nastiti, I was overwhelming. Why? Because there are many participants, many registrants, many students like you who are interested to embark the journey. 
And I cannot say no, you know, Professor Harry and myself, we will try our best to accommodate you, to provide opportunity for you, because you are the future of Indonesia. You are the future of ITS. You are among very few people in Indonesia who selected as a postgraduate program, given a trust to help this country elevate the knowledge, increase the publication, make the research going down to earth and help people. So what can I say for someone like you who are very interested to improve and develop yourself to be beneficial for others? So let me share my, my screen with you. Thank you, Nabila and Nastiti for a wonderful slide that you already prepared. Everyone, can you see my slide? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yes. I only have very limited see. time. Now it's already one past nine, but give me a couple minutes to give you, share with you the spirit. That's a very important point. When we talk about this program, why should we bother? Why should we improve the English proficiency of our postgraduate program? Why should we care about how productive you are in your postgraduate study? All the respected participants, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the reasons. You can see in the QS ranking criteria, you can see here, academic reputation is one of an important part. One of the important part, yeah? Reputation. How to build reputation? If we never publish our work, if, you, if we never tell the world what we are doing, how can we gain reputation? Reputation is something that hardly built, but once you get the reputation, it will guide you and protect you wherever you go. So we are talking about reputation that built based on real achievement, not just make up, not just bedak, bedak, lipstick, lipstick. No, we would like to have real reputation that built because we offer high quality education, we offer very conducive environment, and it is for you to engage in all of those efforts. You can see here academic reputation related with employer reputation because once you graduated, imagine, for example, you graduate from Harvard, for example, Cambridge, for example, right? MIT, for example. Without telling anything, people already know the quality of the uh, institution you graduated, right? So build up reputation for ETS is very important. Not just for the sake of institution, no, but also for the sake of alumni, you will be alumni of ETS later on, right? Bapak Ibu akan menjadi alumni. So building up reputation is not just, oh, ITS want to be like world-class university, this rank, that rank. No, we are not interested for make up and also uh, fake prestige. No, we try to build a real uh, high quality education in which you belong to. So later on, when you graduate to Erna Hastuti, misalnya, Ibu lulus, you graduate from ITS, and people ask you, uh, Ibu, which university you uh, finish, where you finish your PhD, ITS. And then people understand, oh, ITS, a very good university, very high rank university. It will influence your profile. So when we talk about reputation, don't think, why should I bother? It's not my job. It is ITS job to build up reputation, but it is actually our Everyone job, we have to build up the reputation of the university based on real achievement, real quality. Academic reputation will bring employer reputation. You will be able to work in a good company, in high rank company. And you can see alumni outcome. The, if you are working as a researcher, if you are working as professional, the income will also somehow influence by the reputation of the university. And to be able to achieve the pink one, we have to work on the green one. We have to publish paper. We have to make our work known by others. How to do it? 
we have to improve our English. We have to improve our quality of research. We have to work hand in hand with our supervisor. So based on QS ranking, based on the HE, Time Higher Education ranking, reputation is always there. We are not trying to strive for just make up reputation. We are striving, berusaha, bekerja keras untuk membangun reputasi yang real real reputation based on good quality education, high quality of research, high quality of public services, reaching out community and society. That's what we after. Okay, that's the program for postgraduate student. Bapak Ibu, you can see here, what we put in blue is RESEP, researcher and research and enrichment student. So this program specially designed for master and doctoral student to equip you with all needed to publish good paper, to create good research. And then English workshop will be part of the journey because without good English, we cannot write a good paper, okay? And thanks God, currently we are in the process of applying for academic writing center, again, by the support of RELU. Ibu Sarah mentioned in her uh, uh, session this morning, RELO, Regional English Language Office, supported by the US Embassy in Jakarta. We propose, currently still under evaluation, but finger crossed, if we get the uh, support for Academic Writing Center, ITS will build a new Academic Writing Center. In this AWC, you will be able to go come to the office and then have one-on-one -on -one consultation. You can bring your draft. You can bring your plan for publication. Bapak Ibu bisa diskusi one-on-one. -on -one. Jadi betul-betul personal consultation untuk membuat Bapak Ibu bisa menulis dengan lebih baik. Okay? And then, in addition to that, Bapak Ibu bisa lihat underneath here, we have KNB scholarship. Kemitraan negara berkembang. Bapak Ibu, after long uh, communication, we propose to dikti that KNB scholarship will be available for S3, for doctoral degree. This is the first year KNB scholarship will be offered for S3, doctoral degree, and it is ITS idea to propose to the government to provide scholarship for uh, doctoral degree. In addition to that, Professor Harry, took initiative to offer international postgraduate student scholarship. Meaning that later on in the session like this, we not only having Indonesian student, but we will have international student. Some of them may be from Cambodia, Vietnam, Malaysia, uh, Myanmar, Africa, Fiji, other Polynes Polynesia country, uh, Colombia, Venezuela, you can imagine that this campus will be very international. And we hope actually by having international students together with us, it will motivate all it as students to move together. Last, uh, last but not least, we are going to have international student conferences, not only one, but couple. I will go with you for the details. So. This is the English workshop with virtual English language fellow. We are very, very uh, grateful to have Sarah with us, as mentioned by Ms. Nastiti, the moderator of our today's session. Ms. Sarah is a wonderful teacher, very nice, very kind, motivating student, and always give us, uh, you know, strategy, how to improve. I know that Mr. Uh, Ms. Sarah will be with us not for a long time, only up to August. That's why we need to uh, learn from Miss Sarah, Miss Sarah, how we can improve and make this program sustainable. English workshop will be run every Monday, Thursday, Friday, 7 to 9. I really hope that you can wake up at least at 6 a.m. Yeah? Don't be late because the opportunity is very precious for us. And the reason why we put it in the morning, because Miss Sarah, as, as she mentioned, now in New York, 12 hour difference from us. Yeah? So now we are at 9 a.m. 
Ibu Sarah at 9 p.m. Yeah, completely opposite of the word. So we will uh, make a class consists of 30 students, and each student should take six topics shown here. Yeah, six topics shown here. Reflecting your English proficiency, knowing your uh, credible resources to help you, vocabulary, academic reading and comprehension, writing skill, conversational skill to communicate with your supervisor, peers, and also in uh, presenting your work, and also how to uh, deal with academic article. Okay, uh, we will work through this process. So we will have six meetings. In, in the middle will be evaluation. Bapak Ibu, kalau nanti ada yang tidak jelas boleh bertanya ya. Saya ngomongnya kayak kereta api ya. Kalau orang Jawa ngomong sepur tumbuk gitu ya. Ya, cepat because the time is so limited. So if if I'm talking too fast, you can ask later to Nabila and also Nastiti. We have mid evaluation and we have final presentation. And the finish line, we will provide reward. What is the reward? Mbak Elok just now show you a picture of joint workshop for global engineer in Asia and beyond. This, uh, that is one of the reward we, that we provide for you because we are going to go to Russia, yeah? Moscow, since Petersburg, Petersburg, far away from here. For what? To meet other doctoral and postgraduate fellow. We are going to have conference with Japan, Malaysia, Thailand, and also uh, Russia. Japan, Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, and Russia. Yes, five countries. And then I have to mention this because I really would like to motivate you. It is not just about the reward, but reward sometimes intrigue and attract you to work harder, okay? And then we also have ICAS program with Kumamoto University. Next November, we will have International Student Conference with Kumamoto, and Kumamoto is our good, uh, good friend. We are going to send students, 10 students, if the pandemic over, we will send physical mobility, but if not, we are going to do the virtual one. So all the requirements are here, and to pass this program, you need to 100% attend the session, okay? And the session look like this. You can later check again, uh, the time and date and also the topic. So you can choose which one that fit your schedule. For example, we have Pak Andri dari MMT, for example. Yeah? We have Pak Narendra, Narendra, for example. If you think that Monday is your good time, so you can take Monday and take the topic on Monday. So the class is not always the same every time. So tidak 30 orang kelas A, kelas B, kelas C, kelas D. Tidak begitu, Bapak Ibu. Tapi hari Senin topiknya A. Siapa daftar? Du -du 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 -du, 30 penuh, des. Begitu 30 penuh, Bapak Ibu harus ambil yang hari lain. Hari lain. Tetapi total Bapak Ibu harus ambil 6 topik ini. So not all together one class go together, but you may change the uh, fellow in the class and Again, take positively because you will meet many people knowing each other better. Yeah, most of international, sorry, most of the postgraduate student living only in the lab and small cubicle, not knowing anyone, just working with paper, paper, paper. But you not you 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 need to know others because networking is very important. Okay, I will go for the recept. We uh we name this program resep even though r2 sep but we make it resep because resep in indonesian language mean ya resep gitu ya resep masakan bapak ibu ya so if you want to be a successful postgraduate student take the resep you have to follow the resep if you follow resep you can make a yummy rawon or yummy soto right you can make a good cake but if you do not follow resep you will mess up right so this program uh, prepare to develop research skill among postgraduate students. It will be done every two weeks, every Thursday, 3.30 to 5.30, just several occasions. When we have speaker from the US, we will make it 7 to 9 p.m. Malam hari. 
because if you have speaker from the US jamnya 12 jam beda. Jadi kita akan ganti jam. Kalau kita jam setengah empat, mereka nanti di sana belum subuh sudah bangun, Bapak Ibu ya. So we will change the time if we have speaker from other part of the world. The session will be 120 minutes and uh, you will have lecture and question and answer. And for distant learning student, you can take asynchronous session. That means all of the courses will be recorded. The recording will be uploaded. So you can follow the course online. So there is no uh, excuse for you to miss the class because we will make it online for you. And the good thing about Recep this year, we make four stream, hard engineering, electrical, chemical, mechanical, civil, material, and so on. Soft engineering, industrial engineering, information system, technology management, sciences, biology, chemistry, physics, mathematics, architecture, design, and social sciences, urban planning, and so on belong to this stream. That means the topic that will be delivered will be tailor-made according to your field, not just one way for everyone, but we try to provide different uh, angle, different topic for different stream, okay? And then you can see the topics are very interesting. What is the expectation for being a postgraduate student, finding research aid idea, literature review, common research methodology in your field, research management skill, getting published, presentation skill, and life strategy as a researcher. So why wait? Let's do the program. Yeah, it is mandatory for postgraduate student in spring 2021 intake. We also invite non ITS audiences. We have applicants from ITK, Institut Teknologi Kalimantan, from private university, and we also have participant from international. So the class will be international. This is the time for you to test your English, to speak, to discuss. And we are going to provide certificate at the end for you who pass the uh, requirement, which is attend, attending the program minimum 80%. These are the recepts uh, publication. After this, uh, Nabila or Nastiti will send the information to all of you. See, hard engineering in blue, science in orange, soft engineering in green, and then architecture, design, and urban planning in red okay now we are going to share about the registration uh -huh. when we put the deadline on the first of march we have total 234 participants we extend the deadline because on the second of march we have epits and then we end up with 375 applicants 375 applicants doctoral and master degree. And then we have a student with TOEFL score beyond 477 and below 477. While Ibu Sarah can only take 150, not more than that. If the class is too big, the effectiveness of the class will be down. Ya, Jadi Bapak Ibu, 150 akan diajar oleh Ibu Sarah. Ibu, how about me? I belong to 375. That means I cannot go for the session. Don't worry, Bapak Ibu. We still have opportunity for you. Bapak Ibu who are not eligible, that means your English score still below 477, please go to UPT Bahasa. You need to improve your English. Come on, Bapak Ibu, this is the time for you. So don't feel, ah, oh, nggak diterima. My English score only 450. I cannot speak English well. No, 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 no. Don't put pessimism and also, uh, you know, negativity in your mind. Instead, oh, I have a lot of colleagues who already 313 colleagues already more than 477. I have to concentrate this semester. I have to improve my English. Next semester, I will join English workshop for writing. So be positive, okay? Encourage yourself. 
I talked just now with Ibu Ratna. Ibu Ratna is the head of the Center for Languages and Culture. I asked Ibu Ratna to open English course for you who still below 477. Ayo Bapak Ibu. Bapak Ibu les ya. <coughs> Bapak Ibu belajar. And also all session with Sarah will be recorded. And the recording will be shared with you. So you still can learn from Sarah, not directly, but through the recording. For the rest, <coughs> here we have 313, right? 150 will go for Sarah, will go with Sarah. Uh, Nabila and Nastiti will contact 150 first registered participant. And the rest, we are now contacting Relo and try to figure out how we can provide the second class. Don't worry. We will put our uh, heart effort to make this one possible for you. Okay, Bapak Ibu tunggu, you wait for the further notification, but for sure, Professor Harry and myself will try our best to accommodate another 150 more students who register for this program. Now, this is for a set. Yeah, this is for a set. We can see here architecture, we have 32 participants registered, heart engineering 98, science 86, and soft engineering 195. Total, we have 411 participants. Don't worry, capacity of the class, actually 300. So you can pursue yourself, invite your friends, okay? Invite, invite your friend, invite your colleague to join us. This is a, a big Zoom platform, 300 for each meeting. And again, everything will be recorded. So I encourage all the postgraduate students, don't think your friend, your colleague is your competitor. Don't think that way. It is not the right, the, the right way of thinking. Instead, think like this. Waduh, kalau semua maju, kalau semua bagus, maka saya akan keangkat. Karena begitu teman-teman saya semua maju, begitu teman-teman semua saya bagus, berarti network saya 